What is going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. It is December 6th. We're approaching 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Just give it a couple minutes. Let everybody join up into the live stream. Whoever wants to join up. Hopefully you all had a great weekend. So what this is going to be pretty much, and I'm just opening this up, this video right here to the public. This is going to be the last one for the public, and then it's going to be for members only. But twice a month, on Sundays, members are going to have private study groups. So on Sunday at around 4 5 p.m., I'm going to do a live stream. We're going to prepare for the upcoming week. We're going to break down the market, sectors, look at stocks, and just develop game plans for the upcoming week. What are we seeing? Answer questions, and so forth. Again, if you want to join, just head to the main YouTube channel, Trading Learning 101. Click the Join button. You get an introduction video. And then once you sign up, go to the Discord, send me a private message with your YouTube username, and I'll give you full access to the Discord. I'm buckling down. I only want serious people. I don't want a bunch of freeloaders around. And you guys got to think, I have over 5,000 subscribers. You don't know how many messages and questions I get every single day. And I just want to dedicate my time to the ones that want to take this seriously. So what I do on Sundays is I break down the market. I go to the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. I look at the ETFs and I look at the strength of them going into the upcoming week. So for the SPY, Friday the SPY started to break out of its range and push upwards up over 370s. We had the SPY pushing up to all-time new highs. The NASDAQ was pushing up. And the Dow Jones, I believe, was pushing up to all-time new highs. Let's see, the Russell 2000. Russell 2000, again, pushing up to all-time new highs. So all of these major indices are breaking out to all-time new highs. Now I'm going to look at the sectors. It's important to pay attention to the sectors because if you're in a certain stock, let's say the stock is in the energy sector, and the overall energy sector is just getting beat up. It's making new lows on the day. It's been red for days. And you're trying to buy a breakout on this specific stock that's in that energy sector. You have to correlate everything together. I want to show you guys a picture. So this is how I have my scans all set up. I have my spider ETFs scanning right here. It tells me the top sectors that are performing the best on the day. So I can quickly glance up and see that energy, energy sector is the strongest performing sector today currently. Then I have it broke down into individual sectors. I have the financial sector, the industrials, technology, materials, utilities, healthcare, consumer discretionary, communications, 
energy, consumer staples, real estate. So I can quickly glance and I could see, okay, energy is the top performing sector on the day. Energy. So I can go right down to this energy sector right here and it will list the top stocks performing in that sector. And you can clearly see out of all of these sectors, the energy is the darkest green. The more darker green, the more percentage it is up. Now, does that make sense? You always want to try to get a feel and correlate on how the overall market is performing. Like I said, if you're trying to buy a, a stock that's in communications sector, for an example, and the communications sector is just getting beat up, it's making conti just continuous new lows on the day, and you're trying to buy a high of day breakout, you're setting yourself up for failure. So that's how I have it all set up. And then I also have it set up with a few scans, a custom scans that I've created. So I have a VWAP and Fibonacci scanner. And what this VWAP and Fibonacci scanner is, is it, it's scanning for stocks. On the Fibonacci side, it's scanning stocks on a two hour range from the low to the high. So let's say the past two hours, the stock leveled out right here, shot up, and now it's currently pulling back. What this Fibonacci scan is gonna do the past two hours, it's gonna scan from the low to the high, and it's gonna alert me when the stock pulls back at a certain Fibonacci level. So let's say the 38 retracement, which would probably be like right here, it'll alert me on that scanner that the stock is pulling back to that retracement. If a stock pulls back to the golden ratio, that 61.8, which would probably be down here, right there, It'll alert me on that scanner. So that's what that is doing. And on the VWAP side, the VWAP scanner is l alerting me of any stocks that cross either above or below that VWAP on an increase in volume. So let's say we have a stock and it's moving up like this. Here's the VWAP right here. Let me get my other color back. As the stock pushes up to that VWAP, and it, once it crosses over that VWAP, and it has to have increased volume as well, like that. Let's say 1 million in volume. It's crossing above the VWAP at least 2% or 3% with a million volume. For an example, it's going to alert me on this scanner right here. Same thing if the stock drops below the VWAP on increased volume. It'll alert me on this scanner. I've put a lot of time tweaking with this VWAP and Fibonacci scanner. So I, I pretty much got the settings down to the way that I like them. And that's just being in the markets every day, noticing how the scanner is acting out and picking up these stocks, and then going into the settings and tweaking with them to my liking as days go on. So then next, I also have a multi-strategy window. And this multi-strategy window has all kinds of different strategies in it. It's scanning for stocks that are picking up bottom patterns, recognition. Picking up on stocks that halt and resume throughout the day. 
Stocks that are making new yearly highs. Stocks that are down big yesterday, but are up big today. So any potential good bounce place will pop up on this. Stocks rallying off the bottom. And up 3% or more with earnings today. I like to personally have this multi-strategy window just to generate new ideas. And then I have another VWAP strategy scanner right here. And this is just scanning for all stocks with different multiple VWAP strategies. This VWAP strategies, it's scanning for stocks that are crossing above the VWAP, below the VWAP, holding above the VWAP a certain percentage with volume. So there's multiple different VWAP strategies in this scanner right here. And then this one is called my beast mode. This beast mode is picking up on stocks that are hitting new high of day from a dollar to one hundred dollars, and there's no restriction on the float. That is totally different than my Momo low float scanner right here. This specific one is picking up on stocks that are hitting new high of day with volume and the float is under 10 million. And then just the basic percentage gainers tops the list right here. So I can easily just look and see what are the top percentage gainers on the day. And if I wanted, I could easily change it if I wanted. Let me see. So if I go into the configure, this is the biggest percentage gainers. And this is where you can get all of your strategies. So you got your gaps, your up gappers, your volume leaders, relative volume, ranges. If you're a type of trader that only likes to trade range, your losers and your gainers. There's all kinds of different top lists that you can look at if you wanted. So that's all the scanners that I use. And then this top one right here this is pretty much like a heat map what this is telling me is it percentage wise how many stocks are making new highs or how many stocks are making new lows on the day so for an example if this gr green bar right here <clears throat> says 85% and the red is 15%. This is telling me that 85% of stocks in the market are breaking out to new highs on the day. 15% are breaking down to new lows on the day. And vice versa. And this is scanning stocks. I have it set up for... Let's see... From $2 to $100 for both ends. So from $2 to $100, this is going to tell me how many stocks are breaking to new highs and how many are breaking to new lows on the day percentage-wise. This is how I can just quickly gauge and see the strength in the market. If I'm trying to buy a breakout on a high-a-day stock and I see that 90% of stocks are red and making new lows on the day, and 
are making new highs on the day in green, I'm walking into a wall and a disaster. That's the way I look at it. So those are, those are all the scans that I like to use. You don't have to use and have trade ideas. It's just a personal preference to use it if you want. And then, of course, right here, this chart is just the S&P 500 on a three-minute time frame. I always want to see the overall market because three out of four stocks follow the overall market. And then my main screen right here, I have a three minute chart right here, a 10 minute chart, and a one minute chart. These are the time frames that I like to use as a day trader. And then I have a total of five monitors. So I also have this bad boy right here, a total of nine other charts. So pre-market, I go through my watch list and I pick out the best stocks that I want to keep an eye on at the open. I add them all right here, all one minute charts. So that way throughout the day, I can re-add different stocks to this right here and just keep an eye on all of these stocks to see if anything sets up. So I have like a total of 10 different charts that I could be looking at simultane simultaneously. Can't really say that word. In the market as a trader. So I let setups come to me. So let's say I'm looking around and I'm waiting. And then I see a good setup. Setting up for an example. I see a good setup setting up right there or something. Then I can quickly switch over to my main display, which is right here. Type in the stock. And this is just an example. I could see it real quickly on the one minute. I could see the daily chart on my other monitor which would be right here. Break down the 10 minute time frame. See where it's currently at in its range. Glance at it on the three minute chart and go from there and determine where I want to trade this stock or if I want to trade it. So we're going to go over the SPY real quickly. The S&P 500 ETF. So going into Friday, you see at the end of the day, this pushed up to new highs. Going into next week, I'm not going to try to predict if this is going to gap up or gap down. We're just going to have to see where this is going to go for tomorrow morning. So if the market gaps down, possibly look for a grind back up. If the market gaps up, look for a morning sell-off, a possible reversal. We're just gonna have to see what happens. But market's looking pretty strong, still making new highs. Everybody's making money. The more people make money, the more crazy the market is. You're going to see all kinds of videos and people posting on YouTube, stock market crash coming, prepare. Just don't even pay attention to none of that. The market is going to do whatever it wants to do. Take it one day at a time, one week at a time, and go from there. Never try to predict or think things are going to crash and go wrong and panic's all going to come in. There's just no point in it. It's a waste of time. 
So let's look at the sectors next. Uh, the top performing sector on Friday was energy. XLE. You could see XLE had a good gap up. Right from the open, from 3930s, just grinded all the way up over 40, pushed up to 4050s, pulled back, hung around VWAP all day pretty much, bouncing off of it, generating opportunities, and closed pretty strong at new high of day. So paying attention to this type of stuff and then seeing what's popping up in the energy sectors. So this right here, look at all these stocks that were on the biggest percenters list in energy. We had OXY, look at that strong move from 1680s all the way up to 1850s. MRO, follow the trend guys, follow the trend, follow the overall market. This is where you piggyback the easy money. APA was another one. And look at that. They're all, all the charts look the same, just like the XLE sector. That big morning grind push hung around VWAP and then pushed the rest of the day. All of these stocks. Just like XLE, the energy sector. Morning push, hung around VWAP, lunch hours, pushed the last part of the day. And I'm just going to pull up some charts just to show you the examples of it real quick. Morning push, consolidation, lunch hours, push at the end of the day. Morning push, consolidation, pull back to VWAP, push at the end of the day. APA, the same thing, probably. Morning push, consolidation, push at the end of the day. You see how all of these look similar to the sector? Morning push, consolidation, push at the end of the day. And I just keep going down the list of all of these stocks in the same sector. And you guys all can see the same picture idea. But they're not all exactly the same because all stocks have their own personalities. And they all move their own certain way. Like for FTI here. It did have that morning push, but then it had a nasty pullback back down below that VWAP and then surged all the way back up, pushed up, and then consolidated. Pretty choppy and a little messy, but you could see the general picture of it. And DVN. You see how all of these stocks look the same? And that was energy. Now the next sex sector below that was the materials, XLB. XLB, the daily chart looks like it's trying to test and push out to new highs above 7250. Real quickly. Right here. This is the daily chart on materials. See how it just hung out around that 13 EMA and then it got that good push on Friday? A good break over the 7250s. Materials will be hitting out to new highs. So if you got a stock that's in the material sector, look for that sector breakout to new highs. 
So let's take a look at some stocks that were in the material sector. Right here. MOS was the top one. Look at that big move on MOS from 2150 all the way up to 2281. It moved about a buck 25, but still good move on this. And you this is just going to show too that you don't have to play what everybody else is playing for the day, the hot stock. You could just stick with these sectors and ride the momentum off of the best performing sector on the day. So we got this good push up from 2150. Nice explosion right there. All the way up to 2250. Pulls back, consolidates all the way to the VWAP. And then pushes up to new highs. To 2270s. So from 22 all the way up to 2270 a nice 70 cent push all within 30 minutes that's pretty good pulls back this old resistance right there was all holding as support and you could have just traded the range on this from 2260 to 2280 nice 20 cent scalps back and forth the rest of the day all right there so many different trading opportunities, guys. Somebody asked, are you going to trade live? I only trade live on Fridays. So when the stock market in the United States is open, that's the only time I trade live. Trading live every day, it's just too much. Just way too much. I don't want to stress myself out. Trading's already hard enough, and running a Discord full-time, and running a membership for the Discord. Right now, Friday is the only good time, and I'm doing a master class and study sessions. I got a lot going on. So, there was MOS. The next one was LYB. LYB pushing from 8650s up to 8950s. CF. Another good push on it. So the point I'm trying to get across with today's study group is paying attention to the overall market, paying attention to the sectors. Which ones are the best performing sectors on the day? And just by doing that, you can easily piggyback the hot sector and the stocks in that sector for the day. You don't normally have to trade what everybody else is trading in the hot number one stock for the day. So I'm just trying to show you guys different trading strategies and styles that are out there. That's the great thing with the stock market. And you could see all of these stocks in the material sector, every single one that I pull up, they all look the same pretty much. Sure, they all have their little differences, but the big picture, they all look the same. Especially the top ones. You know, the more down the list you go, that's the more sloppier they get. Like, look at NEM. You know, just random up, random down, up, down. But paying attention to these sectors and the hot stocks in the sectors, this is how you can be ahead of everybody else and recognize when a sector starts to heat up and really start to go.
like the EV sector not too long ago. If you guys are interested in the video description of this, I have a link to the Discord. Go ahead, join up if you want. It's absolutely free for you guys. But we're doing this study group session for today for the public for free going forward into 2021. I'm pretty much buckling down, making everything private and for members only. I, I only want to really dedicate my time to people that show interest in this and want to take this seriously. I'm looking to build a strong community of traders and students. And if you're interested, just head to the YouTube channel, click that join button. Again, you get an introduction video, get purchased to join the membership, and then on the Discord, send me a private message with your YouTube username, and I'll access you membership to the Discord to unlock everything. I'll give you guys all the tools that you need and the educational content that you need to be a day trader. And we're going to have exclusive member only videos, live streams, live stream class once a month for the master class. We're going to do Sunday study group sessions twice a month for members only to answer questions, go over trading strategies, talk about stocks, what's been heating up and going on in the stock market bounce ideas off of each other, and grow. I'm really excited about this because I know that it's going to have a little small community and we're all going to build a tight bond and we're going to work as a team. That's what I want to do with this. And then during market hours, we'll all be in chat together, calling out stocks. What do we see? What are we trading? What are we noticing? Having multiple eyes in the markets. And then you guys will visually see every day how I trade, learn from me. And then you yourself can start generating consistent profits. I also have more perks coming down the road. Milk Cash says, thanks for your hard work. Your vids helped me get going on the Street Smart Edge platform. You're welcome. In case you guys didn't know, I use Street Smart Edge. I don't trade with Charles Schwab. I just use the charting platform, Street Smart Edge, because it's just more eye appealing than think or swim. These candlesticks and the charts. They're just much more detailed and easier to look at compared to Think or Swim. Think or Swim, it just looks like a blob on the screen. I cannot tell you how many times I've went into the settings on Think or Swim and tweaked with the charts to try to make them look better. And they just never look better. Don't get me wrong though, Thinkorswim does have good perks that Street Smart Edge doesn't have. And this is where it comes in. Every uh every charting platform has their ups and downs. You know, they have their pros and their cons. So look at let's look at the daily chart on this. Or no, we'll look at a a one minute chart. See, to me, visually, the candlesticks on this, and I'm just being picky and this is me, it just, I can't see the definition in it. I can't see the wicks. I can really only see the candlesticks. But then when I look at Street Smart Edge, I can zoom in on these charts. It's just more defined. 
like this. Even with the daily charts on them. You know, I can much clearly better see the wicks, the upper wicks, the bottom wicks, the candles. And I will give Thinkorswim one thing. They have a lot of indicators that you can use and put on your charts. Look at all these indicators that you can choose from. But I just stick with some basic volume indicators. If you've guys been with me for a while, you guys know, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys know that I'm a volume and price action trader. Volume is king in the stock market. But all right, what else do you guys want to talk about? What did you guys trade last week? I bet you somebody is going to mention marijuana stocks. I bet you. There's always somebody that always talks about pot stocks. And then to give you guys a quick tip about your pot stocks, always follow the marijuana index, MJ, Mary Jane. That you always want to follow these indexes and sectors of the stocks that you like to trade because the index is the king. And if the king is upset, everybody else is going to be upset and they're going to pay for it. If the king is happy and he's giving, he's giving out his wealth, all of his peasants or people under him are going to be happy. Does that make sense? So look at the uh, daily chart on MJ. MJ just got beat down just forever from... From March, the end of March of 2019, this was just in a downtrend all the way to right here, March 20th of 2020. So for one year, marijuana was in a bear market, just making new lows and lows and lows and lows. And now you could see recently, right here, it's bottomed out. And now it's moving its way back on up. So look for marijuana to keep pushing up and going higher. Look at the moving averages. You see how they're all curling up? And now that they're crossing over each other, that's going to lead into momentum and good pushes for nice moves to the upside. So now that you see that with the MJ ETF, now you want to start looking into all of the marijuana stocks. Alright, I got a bunch of stocks here. So HX is one of them. And if your stock is under 2 bucks, I'm not even going to talk about it. Uh, HX, that looks like a pump and dump. That's a really nasty looking chart. I mean, look at it. The stock couldn't hold its gains at all. So I wouldn't pay no attention to H HX. <clears throat> PPSI is the next one. Again, a nasty sell-off. It failed. At the end of the day right here. At 5.50s. It couldn't push over $6. It got denied at $6. Once. Twice. Th three, four times right there. And five times. Look at that wick. On the very last one. Let's zoom in.
That's what I'm talking about right there. Draw my area at six. That mental $1 level, $6. This stock failed at that $6 right there, right there, right there, right there. And then look at that long wick right there. That's a big indication that there's a big iceberg up there. And then everybody gave up because they tried, it failed. They tried, it failed. They tried, it failed. They tried, it failed. People are going to get tired of trying so many times. And then that's what leads to everybody giving up. And then the stock sells off because everybody gives up and everybody sells it. And then it just decays. That's what happened right there. This is probably slowly going to fade all the way back down to 350. It's dead. So the next one's BB. Uh, BB is, uh, had a good gap up. Let's see. That's a massive float on BB. Look at that float. That float is 550 million. You guys can't really see that. Five hundred and fifty million float. That's a massive float. So I think of the float, the bigger that float is, the more massive that freight train is. So you're gonna need more volume to get that stock up and going. This did have a good grind from 750 up to 850, but it took all day for it to move up $1. I think there's better opportunities out there for tying up my money for one whole trading day for a stock to move up $1. I call this the death grind. I'm not. For me personally, I'm not really interested in stocks that do death grinds. They're, they just suck to be in because it just takes forever for the stock to slowly move up pennies at a time. It may continue to keep going. But I'd look for it to probably pull back down to eight bucks. And if eight bucks can hold and push back up and break nine, eight fifty to nine, that's good. But I'm not really interested in a stock this high in float. Remember, the more higher that float is, you need more people to jump on and get in on this. For it to push up that demand. Keep it simple. It's the supply and demand effect in the stock market. So the higher that float is. You're going to need more demand. For it to push up. The bigger that freight train. But once that freight train gets going in one direction. It's hard to stop that freight train. So you could look for this trend to continue upwards. NAOV, stocks under a dollar, I'm not interested. So yeah, Mike says, like all EVs, follow Tesla. Yup, Tesla is the leading stock for your EV stocks. So whatever Tesla does, this is going to be, this is like the king right now of the EV stocks, Tesla. So if Tesla keeps going and pushing up, all of these other EV stocks are going to follow in sympathy. Three out of four stocks follow the overall market, and that carries into sectors. So someone says they're in EPD right now for a swing the past three days. 
That's good. Good gains on it from 1940s to uh, almost 21 bucks. Three days for a buck 50 gain. Nice. It'll probably get a pullback here soon and potentially push up, continue pushing up. But again, that float is massive. Look at that float. 1.4 billion. That is a massive float. So yeah, possibly going into next week. EPD, look for it to pull back and gear up to push over 21. But just be cautious. You got a big rounding top right here on the 10 minute. Rounding tops are bearish. It'll probably pull back down. And if it breaks down below 2050, I would protect myself. Someone said L-A-Z-R. Sounds like a penny stock. No? It's a newer IPO. Okay. I remember L-A-Z-R. Yep, this is a good one. This opened uh, as a new IPO on Thursday. And Friday, it had an amazing day. An amazing day. Even look what it did Friday. Let's blow this up and look at it. New IPOs have been hot the past year and a half. Like, I... I remember a point everybody was always paying attention to the new IPOs every single week because they were just performing. And it's still carrying over. So LAZR here on Thursday when it opened up the first day, it had a nasty little sell-off right here, but it came all the way back up. Let me look at this for a second. This was pretty good. Opening up, pushing up to 25, and then selling all the way down to 19 bucks, pushing back up, and then holding at this 22, pushing up. Pulling back, continuously made higher lows. The next day, gapped up and just continued performing. But Friday, when it had that sell off right there, it came all the way back up. And the rest of the day, it held above that VWAP, showing that there's bullish intentions or bullish interest in this stock. I'm not sure what the float is on LAZR because it's a newer IPO. But look at that. From 22, gets a nice gap up to almost 29 bucks the next day. That would have been a wicked swing. And then the next day, when it opens at 28, this runs all the way up to 34.50. What a wicked move. Little choppy action right here in the morning, right there. But after that, I mean, this thing played out beautifully. Resistance was right there. Then it held as support all right here. And at that mental $30 level, a good solid price, that whole $10 mental level, 30 bucks. Just boom, all the way up to $34.50. A nice $4.50 move from 11 to almost noon, so about 45 minutes. Now that is much better, and that is the type of stuff that I like to look for compared to one stock moving up $1. 
the whole trading day. This stock just moved $4.50 within 45 minutes. That is an awesome opportunity. That's the type of plays that I like to look for. So going into uh, next week, LAZR, yeah, I'd keep it on watch for sure. See if continued volume keeps pumping into the stock. I'm not too sure on what LAZR does. <clears throat> Let's see. U.S.-based automotive hardware and software technology company. It's on the NASDAQ. See, that's funny. I see that it has this operates as a blank check company right here. Operates as a blank check company. And I say that's funny because on trade ideas, Look what they just did. Where is it at? There's a blank check scan that they just created and added on trade ideas. Right here. You see it? This one right here. They just added and created that. And it's funny, LAZR, when you read the business summary, it's in the blank check field. So you see how paying attention to the details can help? Remind me later on to click on this blank check scan. To see what it's all about. I won't do it right now. We'll do it later. Wow. Yeah, even on LAZR. Like, this is so good. At that $30 mental level. That was a key level for this stock all day. It was resistance in the early morning, and then it held as support and ran up, and then they slowly decayed it all the way down to that $30 level, and at the end of the day, it gets a good bounce for 2 bucks. So look for 30 to hold as support and pushing up off that, running back up to the highs. That's the type of stock that I like to look for, guys. Not these crappy little penny stocks under a dollar moving one-tenths of a penny at a time. I'm not into that type of stuff. And no offense to you guys or anybody that trades them. There are successful people that do trade those types of stocks. But that's a whole different world. And they move totally different. Than these types of stocks. Alright. What else we got? Someone asked. How do you find the index and sectors? It's. Just go to like. Finviz.com. And you know. Look at the heat map. Or when you look at a stock. Just you could clearly see. What industry. What sector it's in. I mean. To be honest, this is just basic common knowledge that you should know as a trader. And if you don't know about this type of stuff, I'm not picking on you, but you need to brush up on your game and get that studying in. I tell you guys all the time, study, study, study. The more you know personally, the more edge and advantage you have over that somebody that doesn't know what they're doing.
And that's the honest truth. And I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat things for you guys. I'm going to tell you it like it is. DUO on Finviz. Right there, it tells you it's in real estate and the real estate service. And it's a China stock. Right there. You click on real estate and it pulls up the real estate sector. And you could sort it by the biggest percentage change from the top to the bottom. There's all types of different ways. Um, use the website, not Investimonials, uh, Investopedia. Investopedia, this website is going to tell you guys everything you need to know or what you want to know. They have a search bar at the top right here. What I like about this search bar is you can ask any question that you have. What is a stock's float? What is a sector? Sector. See, they have all of these sector definitions, and these are blog posts that other people have written and published. And what Investopedia does, it's like a dictionary for the stock market. They have education tab up here, their own little dictionary. You know, you can learn about all this cool stuff, 401k or Roth IRA. I preach about Investopedia all the time. And I could give you guys all the tools, but you guys got to put the work in and do it. So. Sector analysis definition. It tells you what your sectors are, what they do, how to track them. Just dig in and learn about all of this stuff. Now someone asked uh, EVK. What's EVK? Four million float. Let's see. This recently had a good pop, but it has a history of not holding its gains. You could see it here on the 10 minute also. So paying attention to the details, like I say, you could see it popped right there, couldn't hold. Popped here, couldn't hold. Popped here, couldn't hold. So there's a lot of trapped people. In on this stock. I would see if it. Maybe will hold up at this 350 level. For a maybe bounce on it. Maybe back up to 450s. But that. Uh, it is a 4 million float stock. It's more of like a pump stock. It's in the retail trade sector. Women's clothes. So. Look at the, um, the retail sector. Or that would be. It's either. Consumer discretionary. Or discretionary. Uh, consumer discretionary. Is like. Everyday needs. That people have. Like, uh, like clothes, food, and all that stuff. Man, that's a wicked downfall for the stock. From 850s all the way down to 3s. It could have a good bounce on it, like I said. Just keep an eye on this 350s. That's the, that's the area for it. Right there. Someone asked about SPI. SPI was hot not too long ago when Guy Gentile was pumping it. But after that pump, 
I mean, it's done for. It may bounce here at 8. It's still got ways to sell down. And it's been in a continuous downtrend since this area right here at 12. I would just say don't be a bottom picker. And wait till the stock proves to you that it wants to bounce and produce gains. You know, this is the area way back here. It got pumped. And I say Guy Gentile pumped this stock because if you follow Guy Gentile and look at his tweets, all in this area, he was tweeting about it. And he's got many, many, many followers. He kept tweeting out, loading up, I'm loading up, I'm loading up, I'm loading up. And as he kept tweeting that, the stock just kept pushing up higher and higher and higher. And he cashed out. He cashed out big. And now it sucks for everybody who's all holding onto this, who all bought in here, as this slowly decays back down. That's my thoughts on SPI. So, four cases. I've been following Jivo, went to 280, pulled to a buck 80. Jivo. Jivo. I'd see if Jivo would just continue to hold up and flatline here at this a dollar seventy five area. If it falls below that, it's over. It may get one more good run up to two, maybe two twenty five. The float is pretty massive on it at a hundred and twenty million. Float says fifty million on trade ideas, but on Street Smart Edge, it says 114 million. I personally wouldn't even bother with this stock. It's just not worth it. It may pop up to $2, which is 20 cents away, but it's a matter of how long will it take to do that, and would I want to tie up money for 20 cents? Me personally, I wouldn't. All right. So going into next week. Somebody says, why so angry? It's not that I'm angry. It's... I try to say it all the time. Educate yourself to learn this game. And when people come in here and they ask what is an ETF or what is a sector it's, or what's a float, it's just basic knowledge that you should know and learn on your own. And you got to pursue that type of stuff. And that's why I'm always boosting about Investopedia. And I went on that little rant about that website. You know, you yourself have to get on that grind and push and know all of this stuff because there's so many like little things that you have to know as a trader to even have a chance in this game. Because like I said, the more you know, a certain period of time. So on Finviz, the settings is set to 14. So the past 14 days, it's telling you the average range that that stock likes to move, which for this stock, for an example, is 70 cents. So from that, I can start to base a trade idea and go off of that. And it's layered in many layers on how you could formulate trade ideas based off, that, off of that. SMB Capital, they use Arval, relative volume. So Arval, for them, tells them when a stock's in play. If a stock has 2.5 2 or greater in volume, there for that stock, and it's in play. Because average volume is over double what it normally performs.
so we got Acre. Acre. Just a pump and dump, pretty much, looks like. The float is 6.7 million. It's at $2. Sure, you got a good risk versus reward on it. You know, right now, currently, as it's at $2. If you put your stop below a buck ninety, you're risking ten cents to possibly make fifty cents, but you're tying up money, which for me I don't like to do. I don't like to tie up money for long periods of time, you know, for a stock to move fifty cents. If it even does that, it could pop to two twenty five and be done with, but. What I like to do is, and I preach about it all the time, look at the history. What personality does this stock have? When I look at the 10-minute chart here, the history is telling me that the stock loves to pop, but it cannot hold its gains. Right there and right there with the recent history. So there's a lot of people that probably like to accumulate and hold onto this stock. And then once it does have that big surge day, everybody sells. That's what the personality of this stock is. But there is one little cool thing. And I will share it with the daily chart on Acre. It's got a tiny little squeeze going on with that 13 EMA. Oh, you guys can't even see it. That 13 EMA is getting real tight up to that blue line, which is the 50-day moving average, for a nice squeeze potentially on it. But look at that daily chart. Does that daily chart look tempting at all? To me, no. The stock has been decaying for days, weeks, months, years. Someone mentioned NIO. NIO is in a sharp downtrend. This is the 10 minute chart. Just take your uh, trend line and connect all of the lower highs on it. Don't try to be a bottom picker. Wait till the stock shows you that it's strong and it wants to perform. So wait for it to get back above that trend line. And potentially hold that trend line in a new support, building up higher lows. Currently, the stock is making lower lows, lower highs, and it keeps doing that. NIO just had a huge, huge, huge epic run. Epic. And you look at that daily chart. That's a pretty epic run. The stock was like $2 back March of 2020. And all year it ran all the way up to 60 bucks. So everybody who kept buying and accumulating and buying, they're all going to take profits and this is going to have a big sell off. But I could be wrong. It could have a good rebound. But for right now, it's in a sharp downtrend and selling hard. Look at all that volume increase right here. Everybody's panicking and dumping because the stock's not performing and they're not making money. Somebody said, okay, some people are learning. I thought I was listening to Tim Sykes. That's who, one of the people I started learning from. And I loved 
his rants. It got me pumped and motivated to go because it's true. Majority of people don't want to put the work in. They don't want to look at charts. They don't want to figure out why a stock moved for a specific day or why did it make its move. You know, you really got to have a passion for this and get into it. If you're in it just for the money, you won't make it. And that's the honest truth. When I first started, I was like, wow, I'm going to make so much money. I can't wait. I'm going to be a millionaire. It's the wrong thinking. But we all know NIO has been a good trader. So continue to keep tabs on NIO. It's got a ways to fall down. A ways to fall down. Real quickly, let me look at the... Uh, I want to look at a 65-minute chart. And I look at a 65-minute chart, not a 30-minute or a 60-minute chart. Because if you do the math, how many hours are in a trading day? From 9.30 to 4 o'clock. There are six and a half hours in a trading day. If you divide 60 into 6.5, you're missing data on the chart. You're missing a half an hour of data on the chart. So if you just up it to a 65-minute chart, add an extra five minutes, you get an extra candle and you get all of the data for the day and for the week. That's a cool trick I learned from Brian Shannon. So again, I, even on the 65 minute chart here on NIO, look at those deep selling candles. There's a lot of selling going on right now. And like I said, just draw a, tr a simple trend line on it, connecting all of the lower highs. And then once the stock pushes up over that, then maybe you could start looking for a long position for a good bounce. But for right now, just don't be a bottom picker. If you bottom pick, you're going to get destroyed. All right, what else we got, guys? MDGS or TANH. Let's take a look. MDGS, uh, I'm not interested. Sure, it's got a good baseline at that $2. But just for me, personally, I don't like stocks under really $2. What was the other one? T A N H. Another stock under $2. Not interested. Because my reasoning for not paying attention to these stocks under $2, you have to look at these stocks as lottery tickets. Majority of these companies are either just starting out or they're on their way out the door. So they're desperate for money. Anytime the stock pops up in price, that company is going to want to take that money, try to reinvest it back into the company, or take that money because they're so much in debt that they're going to want to pay off that debt. See, look at TANH, and I don't know if this is accurate. But they have $8 million in debt, and they have $15 million in cash. And look at MDGS. Now, that's an even bigger issue. Or no, that's 138 k I thought that was a million. But they got $10 million cash, and their debt is 138 k If you're looking to swing trade these small... 
penny stocks, you got to dig into the SEC filings and see how much debt do they have, how much cash they have on hand. Because if you're in a stock swinging it long term or just swing trading it for a week and they have an extreme amount of debt, you know, that's bad news written all over it. AREC, not worth it. XPEV. All right, cool. Now we got a good one here. XPEV has been pulling back. Just like NIO. So just simply draw a trend line on it. It's all it's doing right now is it's getting a good, healthy retracement. That's all that's happening with these stocks. They're not selling off and it's game over. They're getting a good, healthy retracement because stocks just don't go up, 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 up. They're going to take a break. You got to look at stocks as if they're people. They're going to move. They're going to take a break. They're going to move, take a break, move, take a break. So. It's just like right here. 